Hey guys, so today I'm going to go over 10 reasons why electric vehicles suck. So before you go down to the comment section, make sure you listen to all 10. Let's get right into it. Number one, you can't charge your EV if you're in California. Two, it takes a week to charge your EV at home. Three, you have to make serious modifications to your home's electrical system. Four, it's hard to find fast chargers when you're on a long trip. Five, you will be in long lines at those charging stations. Six, fast chargers take hours to charge your car. Seven, the grid can't support large numbers of EV charging. Eight, you have to burn fossil fuel to charge your car anyway, so what's the point? Nine, EVs are not better for the environment. And 10, EVs cost a lot more than ICE cars. Now, again, before you go to the comments section, I just got one more thing. None of this stuff is true, all right? I hear this stuff in the media all the time. People just repeat this misinformation over and over, and people believe it. And so that's why I want to go over this stuff. Let's get started. Number one, you can't charge your EV in California. Not true, guys. California has asked, not demanded, but they've asked EV owners to not charge between 4 and 9 p.m. That's when the grid is stressed out and there's a lot of demand. Well, here's the thing. Nobody charges their EV between 4 and 9 anyway because that's when the rates are really high. They charge them at night, guys, from midnight to 7 a.m. That's when the rates are cheap. This has no effect on EV charging. Number two, it takes a week to charge your EV at home. That's totally not true. The way this works for most people, you get home from work between 6 and 9 p.m., you pull into your garage, you plug into like the equivalent of a dryer outlet, and when you wake up in the morning, your car is fully charged and you got about 250 miles of range. It's like somebody snuck in the night and topped off your gas tank for you every night. Super easy. Number three, you have to make serious modifications to your home's electrical system. Uh, no, you don't. So all you got to do is you got to have, like I said, the equivalent of a like a 240 volt dryer outlet. So if you don't have one, you got to add it. Like I already had one. Uh, number four, it's hard to find a fast charger when you're on a long trip. Well, there are thousands of these things now. Uh, maybe that was true five years ago, but they're pretty easy to find now. And over the next five years, there's going to they'll be all over the place. It's not going to be a problem. Number five, you'll be in long lines at charging stations. Well, of all these 10 things, I think this one's most likely to actually be true. And that's because a lot of these stations are broken and we're adding millions of new electric cars to the streets. So I think companies like Electrify America, for example, they got to get these things fixed and then they got to think big and double it. And they got to throw the company at it big time or else this will be an ongoing problem. Number six, fast chargers take hours to charge. Now, when you pull up to a fast charger, when you're out and about, you pull up to a fast charger, you plug in, you go walk across the street to you know, a hamburger joint, grab a burger, a sandwich, or you go shopping, Target, whatever. You come back 30 minutes later, and your car is probably gonna be 80% charged. That's over 200 miles of range. Number seven, the grid can't support large numbers of EV charging. Uh, yep, yeah, actually, they sure can. Uh, again, it's like you have times during the day when the grid is taxed. That's from 4 to 9 p.m. typically when people get home from work. But all night long, everybody's sleeping, everything's turned off. The grid has way more capacity than they're using. So they would love to actually make better use of their generation plants and, uh, you know, charge those EVs overnight. Number eight. You have to burn fossil fuel to charge an EV. Well, most people today are going to plug into their utility, which is a mix of solar, wind, hydro, nuclear, gas, or coal. All right, And depending on where you're at, that mix will change. But as we move forward, um, the coal and gas is getting replaced by nuclear, solar, and wind, probably. Uh, but you don't have to charge with fossil fuel. I mean, I've got my own solar power system on my house, and that's how I'm going to charge it. It won't cost me anything. 
Number nine, EVs are not better for the environment. Yes, they are. They're way better. It's not even close. So we have to compare every aspect of carbon footprint from cradle to grave. The mining, the production, the use, and the recycle. So when we compare the mining of lithium, cobalt, nickel for an electric car versus the mining of iron ore and other things for the gas car, and we compare the production of a battery for the electric car versus the production of an engine transmission differential cooling systems for the ICE car, then at that point the electric vehicle because of the battery actually produces more carbon up to this point. But when we look at the use of these vehicles over their lifetimes we have to compare producing electricity from a mix of fuels for the electric cars versus that of drilling for oil, refining it into gasoline and getting it to the gas stations. And the real deal breaker is that the gas car is going to burn seven to 10,000 gallons of gas over its life. So you can see that EVs quickly make up the difference from the production of the battery. So we see from the chart that when we look at the entire life cycle, electric vehicles even today are 60 to 70 percent better for the environment and they're getting better all the time so the gap is just going to widen. Number 10, electric vehicles cost way more than ICE cars. Well that's actually true. The upfront cost is about 10 to 15 thousand more per vehicle. However, because you're not paying for gas and electric charging is way cheaper, this actually makes up for that initial cost pretty fast. So if you keep your car for a while it's going to be a lot cheaper than a gas car in the long run. Okay, so in summary, uh, most people charge their electric vehicles overnight, even in California. You can get a full charge at home in your garage. Uh, you can use a 120 outlet for a slow charge of about 30 miles per day, or you can use a, the equivalent of a dryer outlet, 240, and get a full charge of 300 miles overnight. Uh, chargers have been built out, especially Tesla's network, they're all over the place. And there's a lot of money coming online to add a lot more chargers across the country. Uh, fast chargers take about 30 minutes to get a 80% uh, charge, about 250 miles of range. The grid can support charging electric vehicles because they'll be charged overnight when the demand is low. So there's um, plenty of supply overnight. Uh, you don't have to burn fossil fuels to charge your car, but most people will. It'll be a mix of fossil fuels and renewable energy, and that'll move toward renewable energy over time. EVs are definitely better for the environment. It's somewhere around 60 to 80 percent even today, and it's getting better every day. And the long-term cost of an EV is actually lower than an ICE car even today and that also is getting better. So there are always exceptions to the rule. Maybe you live in an apartment complex where you can't plug in, you're not allowed to charge at work, there are no superchargers in your area, well then maybe you should hold off on getting an electric vehicle. But in general uh, we're moving toward electric vehicles and it's not because they're better for the environment or because the government is forcing you to, they're just better. And people are going to choose electric vehicles going forward. The auto manufacturers all know this. They're all switching over because that's what people want. Well, let me know what you think in the comments, guys. Thanks for watching. I'll see you on the next one.